And Kay and I are standing on the driveway, hugging each other, sobbing, just sobbing. And Kay reaches down and she's wearing a necklace that has two words that are the words of the title of the book she'd just written, Choose Joy. And I look at her and I say, how do you choose joy? When your heart is breaking in a million pieces, how do you choose joy? The police came, broke the door down, found the, the inevitable bad news. They're carrying my sons out in a body bag. And I, if I hadn't had a small group, I, I don't know that I'd still be in ministry right now. My son, my youngest son, Matthew, struggled with mental illness his entire life. He was born as a, as a child. We could see he was clinically depressed as a child. And I remember when he was 17 years old, he came to me in tears. He loved the Lord. He had a tender heart, a tortured mind. Tender heart, tortured mind. He led people to Christ. He gave my book out to people. He would witness to people on suicide sites. He said, Dad, it just doesn't work for me. I just can't get the depression out. And when at 17, he came to me and he said, Dad, it's real obvious I'm not going to be healed. He said, We've, we, we have gone to the best doctors. I've had the best medicine. Dad, I, I've gone to the best healers, men of faith, women of faith. I said, Dad, you're a man of faith. Mom is a woman of faith. You've prayed for me, intercessors. Uh, I've gone to the best counselors. He said, it's real clear. I'm not going to get well. Why can't I just die and go on to heaven? I know where I'm going. Why can't I just go on? I, I just don't want the pain anymore. That'll break your heart as a father, okay, to have your son. And in tears, I'm standing there flooding tears down my face. And I said, Matthew, I, I don't think you want to die. I just think you want to be over the pain. You want relief. And I said, here's my prayer. One, I will never stop praying for a miracle because miracles do happen. As a pastor, I've seen thousands of miracles style physical miracles. I've seen many, many miracles. So I know they happen. But because they're miracles, because they don't always happen, not every time. Uh, and so sometimes it doesn't. And, and I said, my prayer is, A, you'll be miraculously cured. Okay. And I will never stop praying for that. And I do have a prayer ministry. And number two, though, if not, I pray that through your own spiritual growth and maturity, good counselor, good medication, you'll be able to manage. Because Matthew, the truth is on this earth, not everything gets healed. This is hev not heaven, this is earth. In heaven, there's no more sadness, sorrow, sickness, suffering. But he said, there's pain here on earth. And that's why we are to pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because in heaven, God's will is done perfectly, completely, instantly, and continuously. On earth, none of that's true. I often don't do God's will. You often don't do God's will. Other people, and so we hurt people intentionally, unintentionally, and there is, everything is broken on this planet by sin, uh, the weather's broken, the economy's broken, our bodies are broken, our minds are broken, everything's, we live in a broken planet. And that's why the Bible says in Romans, creation groans for the day of, of salvation. So I said, what do you do when, a problem can't be solved. And there, if I have a child who has cerebral palsy, that child's gonna have it the rest of its life, most likely. In those kind of things, you have to manage the problem. And some problems aren't miracles. Some problems are managed for the glory of God. Johnny gave glory to God without a miracle, has done her entire life, right. okay? And many others have done that too, who've lived with thorns in the flesh. And they gave glory to God either through a miracle or through managing it. Either way, God gets glory. So my prayer is that you'll be able to manage it and then God will give you a ministry of helping other people. Hmm. Well, uh, about eight years ago, Matthew would come over to our house for uh, dinner one night and we had a good time. We watched TV, played a few games. There's no problem, no rift. He lived in his own home. As he was leaving, he said, Dad, I'm just so tired. I'm I'm so tired. And that was the last we heard from him. Wow. So about 24 hours later, we are worried because 
what we had feared might happen someday and what we would pray would never happen. We go over to his house. His car's in the driveway. The door's locked. We don't have a key to get into his house. And we're waiting for the police to come break down the door to find this terrible moment in our lives. And Kay and I are standing on the driveway, hugging each other, sobbing, just sobbing. And Kay reaches down and she's wearing a necklace that has two words that are the words of the title of the book she'd just written, Choose Joy. And I look at her and I say, how do you choose joy? When your heart is breaking in a million pieces, how do you choose joy? The police came, broke the door down, found the, the inevitable bad news. They're carrying my sons out in a body bag. And I, if I hadn't had a small group, I, I don't know that I'd still be in ministry right now, but that, that group that I'd been in for so many years, those couples showed up within 30 minutes, 15, 20 minutes on that driveway. And they didn't say anything. They just hugged us, okay? They just hugged us. And, and they said, we're not going to leave you alone tonight. The guys hugged the, me and the women hugged Kay. They said, we're coming to your house. You don't have to say anything. We're, we're just going to be with you. Now, this is an important thing I want to say to those of you who are watching. I teach this to pastors all around the world. The deeper the pain, the fewer words you use. This is an important thing to remember. The deeper the pain, the fewer words you use. If somebody's having a bad hair day, you can have a 30 minute you know, conversation, yeah. Yeah. okay? But if somebody's just lost a son to suicide, you show up and shut up. There's nothing you can say. It's the ministry of presence. People say, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just show up and shut up. That is the ministry of presence. Now, let me go back to when I said how God uses in every purpose. Out of that pain came. The, for the next 16 weeks, I spent it alone with God. I was either with Kay or with God. I didn't do any preaching, no staff meeting, n nothing for 16 weeks. I had all my buddies, okay, uh, Judah Smith and uh, Judd Wilhite and uh, all, I had 60, Greg Laurie, all came in and preached for me for 16 weeks, okay? And I was either with Cod or with Kay and just listening. I received during that time, I'm not exaggerating, maybe 30, 35,000 letters of condolences. And the ones that meant the most to me, honestly, Matt, were not the ones from rock stars and presidents and prime ministers. They, they wrote me, many, many people that I didn't know wrote me and gave great condolences. The ones that meant the most to me were people that Matthew had led to Christ. Oh my goodness. And they said, I know that Matthew struggled with mental illness his entire life but he led me to faith and I'm going to be in heaven because of him. And he was talking to me on a suicide site and he talked me out of it and I'm going to be in heaven because of him. And I remember writing in my journal that day in God's garden of grace, even broken trees bear fruit. My goodness. And then I wrote, and we're all broken. Okay. We're, we're all broken. Okay. So if you think that reading Purpose Driven Life is going to give you a perfect life, don't even bother. It will give you a life of purpose, and it will help you understand how God uses all these things. And the fifth thing was God uses pain to be a witness. I, I actually think that our greatest witness to the world is how we handle pain. Not how we handle good times. There's a guy I've been witnessing to on my block for 20 years, and he was not interested in anything. He just shut down, closed. But when Matthew died, I remember driving by one day, and he's out watering his lawn, and he looks up at me, and he goes, and I'm going, that got to him. That got to him. And all of a sudden, it was real, and he was watching how I was handling the worst circumstances of my life. And so 
as I say, your greatest ministry will come out of your deepest pain. I say that from experience. There's not a week go by that somebody famous calls me with either a mental illness issue or a suicide issue. And I'm talking about from the highest of the highest people, personalities in politics and in celebrity. And Kay and I did not ask for this ministry of ministering to families with mental illness and ministering to families struggling with suicide of a family member. I didn't want that ministry, but it's one that God gave us and I'm not gonna waste the pain. So I would say to everybody, whatever your pain is, have you been molested? My wife was molested as a little girl in a church. She has used that pain to help others, okay? Uh, cancer, I, 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 don't, you're gonna go through pain in life, just don't waste it. If you're gonna go through pain, you might as well use it to help somebody else out. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.